Hey guys, Miss Marcus here, and as you can see, Marcus Mafia MLO episode number 21. I think it was a week ago now that I said that it would be back and uh, it took a week for me to release another video. It's because I was playing it a lot, I was playing it loads, and that's why, as you can see, well, actually, I'm gonna have loads of episodes out like in a quick burst of time, which a lot of people will enjoy because for some reason MLO is extremely popular on the YouTube. With that being said, in this episode today we have two matches. Two matches is basically my usual uh, maximum. Usually I don't go more than two matches, so every once in a while I maybe do three, sometimes even do four. I don't know what usually happens, but anyway, in this particular episode we have two matches for you today. And they're against two very tough opponents, uh, people I don't actually know. The first guy is actually playing with Sassuolo as his base team. Name was Lala Vitris 85, I think. And of course, Tolas, it's blah, 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 blah. Basically, the points in the end, in uh, in terms of getting points, is absolutely ridiculous because it takes so long before you actually end up facing teams and getting loads and loads of points and whatnot. But as you can see, my team, relatively basic. James McCarthy has been pushed out to the left-hand side because I don't have a left midfielder. I really should be really should be buying one soon. Anyway, Vic Victor Elma. Victor Elm. Now I know he's officially a Victor Elm. He's uh, the older brother of Rasmus Elm. Anyway. Victor Elm played in the right and the left midfield slot, left centre midfield slot. And we are against this guy, and this guy was pretty good. And I've sort of figured out that playing this game like Mourinho is ridiculously good. As in basically scoring really cheap counter-attacking goals. But no, <laughs> in the, basically in the first couple of minutes of the match, he gets shot away. And he blocks his relatively decent shot. But then he gives it straight to Vidra from the throw-out, and he just pops it in the back of the net. So after literally five minutes on the clock, we were 1-0 up. So with that being said, we, we sort of just kept attacking as you as you do. You don't just sort of stay back and defend the whole game. But no one here gets the ball, runs past Bodmer, runs past his, all the players, gets a shot away, and it's absolutely ridiculous, and he hits it wide. So Kevin Nolan of West Ham is not a particularly good player at all, and I don't know why I still have him. But with that being said, in the 38th minute here, Samaras gets thrown goal, Samaras scores, and it's a, it's a relatively nice goal from the guy. I mean, he did a little, nice little bit of, um, nice little bit of uh, control there get past Zicardo and Rakitsky at the back, but with that being said at halftime, it was one all between teams. I mean, we both played relatively good football in this match compared to usual other matches where they don't play football. To me, pass completion percentage in this game particularly doesn't really mean as much as in the other Pezes where all you did was you saw people with a low pass completion percentage because they just kept pinging the ball over the top. To me, I'm not going to really point that out anymore. Like, I might have a low pass completion percentage, but I might win the game or I might lose the game. And to me... It sort of comes to the point that pass completion percentage, like I was saying, doesn't really mean too much anymore because sometimes the players just aren't up for doing it. But Samaras gets thrown goal for him and he pops in the back of the net. It was an absolutely fantastic finish. And I was sort of put under the cosh literally from from half time, from the kickoff at half time. With that being said, Didier yeah, Conan gets the ball back in the 54th minute here. It fortunately comes to Kevin Nolan, pushes Bodmer off the ball, gets a shot away from the edge of the box, and it's an absolute beast of a strike into the top corner. So with that goal coming in the literally 54th minute, he sort of went in the, on the attack literally from kickoff. He tried to get through to San uh, Yatabana. Uh, Yatabana gets a shot away, and uh, I think Luciano was in goal for me. He made a, made, made a relatively decent save. I mean, Luciano, I think I might need to maybe upgrade my goalkeeper. With that being said, Vidra, 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 Vidra is an absolute animal, by the way. And he hits the post there and comes out to James McCarthy. He tries maybe to get a, a shot back in. I'm not actually sure. I just sort of skin past a couple of players, get a shot away eventually. The keeper makes an absolutely great save. And it, he sort of like stumbles on the ball for a bit and I was like, okay, fair enough. Just clear it, mate. It's what you really should do. But in the, the last 15 minutes here, no one gets thrown goal. No one gets a shot. It was a good save from the goalkeeper. But for some reason, it, the referee pulls it back for a foul. So instead of me going for goal here, I was actually trying to play it off to Mulgrew. But for some reason, I passed it in by mistake to Vidra and Vidra just popped it in. To me, that's a scummy goal and I really shouldn't have actually scored it. I was quite... I was quite disappointed when I did score because I didn't actually mean to do that. I meant to try and pass it, like do a layoff for Charlie Mulgrew to hit. But with that being said, 3 2 was the final score to me. I mean, in the end, did I really deserve it? Well, 9 shots, 7 on target sort of says maybe I did. I mean, he was a very, very good player as well. He, had, he actually had better possession than me as well. But Martin Vidra got a 7.0 rating and he was the man of the match. Vidra's probably the best player I've had in MLO since Stephen Fletcher back in PES 2013. Not saying something concerning Stephen Fletcher was with me for the whole time of PES 2013. But went up rating nine nine points in terms of rating. He went down by seven. His rating should be higher than that. But anyway, I got 90 points for that. For that no, 60 points, sorry. For that win. Can't do mathematics in my head. Okay, that's a liar. I'm actually really good with maths. But into the second and final match of this episode. And it was against a guy called um, Baslin Shadow. And he had a team name of Berliner Schattenwolf. 
Shatton, Wolf, whatever. But he had um, difference in team strength was large, and he had two con- had like two consecutive wins. If I won, I'd get 190 points, and I was like, well, that'd be pretty good. So let's see this guy's team, a Berliner Schattelwolf. And he had Icardi and Valabla and Wellington Nem and Fetsafidis and Mbia and Scott Parker. And I was like, oh, God, I'm going to have no fun in this game at all. And he had um, one of the Boatangs on the bench. I'm not sure if it's Jerome or Kevin or if it's not even, I don't even know if it's, if it's just another Boatang. But with that, he kicked off and we're playing at Old Trafford. And for some reason, I absolutely despise Old Trafford. It's such a ridiculous game. Such a ridiculous stadium to play at. I, for some reason, I just never play well at Old Trafford. But in the first minutes of the match here, James McCarthy gets on the ball. Just run past his players. So for some reason, this guy couldn't really defend well considering his, he had a much better team than me. Get a shot away. It's a nice save from the goalkeeper, to be fair. Comes out to Kevin Nolan. Nolan with another shot. And it's an absolutely fantastic save from his goalkeeper. So into the 25th minute of the match, come up to half, come up to halfway in the halfway and the halfway mark in the first half. Uh, James McCarthy gets a header away. It's a really good save from the goalkeeper, and it just comes out to Vidra who pops in the back of the net. So, so I knows that Vidra likes to be in the right places at the right time. For some reason, the referee gave a foul for this, and I don't understand why because I think it was Elm got the ball completely. So I don't really see what the point was. But um, from the free kick, he sort of leave it about for a bit eventually before he eventually took it. He, he ended up playing it short to Valon Vuela, I think is his name, gets it to Fetzafidis, who runs around the corner, and he gets he tries to get a shot, we can't really get the shot away, but Luciano just picks up the ball, and I was like, okay, and I sort of changed it to two by mistake, as you usually do every once in a while, threw it out to Raj to on this right-hand side, and I just, sort of just played normal football as I usually do, but he left massive gaps in the midfield slot, as you can see sort of here, there's a lot of space in this midfield slot for the likes of Kevin Nolan and whatnot to exploit from, so Vidra here on the ball plays it eventually eventually play it through to Kevin Nolan. No one takes his first he takes an absolutely fantastic goal, by the way. That's absolutely amazing. But Raj Tarav here, it was so unfortunate that he hit the I think it was Vidra um with the shot. Because that would look like an absolute like sort of thunder strike, maybe to the top corner or whatnot. But at halftime it was 2-0 to me against Berliner Shelton Wolf. And like I looked at his stats, and the stats were relatively not even to be fair, I mean I had more possession, I had more shots. If I'd taken my chances, it would probably be like 4 0 up or whatnot. But it comes to the second half and he gets a shot with Mbia here. It's a good save from my goalkeeper and I was like, okay. You gotta defend the corner, gotta keep it tight until about the 60 odd minutes and maybe just go a bit more defensive. But he actually did the probably the coolest corner I've ever seen. He takes Mbia out wide, heads it in, and then he actually scores it with Pazuelo with a with a header down. So coming into the last minutes of the match here, as you can see. I was under a lot of pressure here on James McCarford that yellow carded and like I just for some reason couldn't really get out of my half. He ended up getting the ball to Regatini, gives it to him Bia, and for some reason Rakitsky does not get the ball off him and he scores an equalizer with literally his last like proper kick of the game. So 2-2 two, two was the final score between me and the player who was in control of Berliner Schalt Schaffen Chatten Wolf. And I mean, look from the from the ha- from the full time stats. I mean, I, I sort of maybe deserve the win, but Remy Ryu did get the man of the match. His goalkeeper it says quite a lot. But with that being said, if you have enjoyed this episode of MLO the Marcus Mafia episode number twenty one, get this video to ten likes, and I'll put up the next episode as soon as possible, which will probably be whenever it, whenever it gets its ten likes. So with that being said, if you have enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for more, and catch you later.